Hello there, and thanks for joining me. I'm Corel Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the airbrushes in Corel Painter 2019 to create a street art style stencil illustration superimposed onto a photographic background. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new canvas, and you can choose whichever size canvas you like. I'm gonna choose 1920 by 1080 because it fits nicely on the screen. Next, I'm gonna choose a photograph to paint onto. I'll go to File, Place, and you can go ahead and just choose an image. I'm gonna choose this image of a wall here. Next, just go ahead and click OK. And that places our image into our canvas. Now our image is a bit too small. We want it to fill our canvas. So let's go to Edit, Free Transform. We'll click on OK. We'll drag it over to the top left corner. And then we'll drag from this little corner handle here while holding Shift so that we don't accidentally squish it like this. And just make it fill the canvas. Now for this particular image, I could go ahead and squish this if I wanted to, because there's nothing in this image that would look squished. But if you had something with a lot of circles or people's faces and stuff like that, you probably wouldn't want to squish it. Let's go ahead and go with something like this. I'll click on the check up here in the top in the properties bar to commit that transformation. And now our image fills our canvas. We can go ahead and just name that layer background so that we know what it is. And let's go ahead and just lock our background so we don't accidentally paint on the background layer. We wanna create separate layers for our paint. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be creating artwork using stencils. There's a few different ways to create stencils. You could create a stencil from a selection, from an image, from a multi-layered image, or you can freehand draw a stencil using a fully opaque brush. So I'll go ahead and create a new layer here in the bottom of the layers palette. I won't bother naming this layer. Let's just go ahead and go to the toolbar tap and hold on the lasso tool and select the polygonal lasso. And then I will just tap a few times like this to create kind of a starburst effect. And let's say that this is going to be our stencil. Now I wanna to try to line up my end point with my beginning point, or I can just double click and it'll automatically connect those two points. So this is a selection and we could use the selection to keep our paint within this area, which is essentially a stencil. So I could go to my brush selector Go to the airbrushes category, and I could choose smooth spray. Let's go ahead and select black, and we'll just paint over our stencil here to go ahead and fill this in. And you can imagine that this brush is very much like a spray paint can. Now, the bigger you make your brush, the broader the spray is going to be. The smaller you make your brush, the more concentrated the spray will be. So it's almost like your can is closer if the brush is smaller, and your spray can is farther away if your brush is larger. You can control the size of your brush by holding Control Alt or Control Option if you're on Mac and then tapping and dragging your pen. I'm gonna go ahead and deselect that active selection by going to Select None or you could hit Control D on your keyboard. And if you wanted to, you could go through in a few places with light pressure and just kind of overspray a little bit so it's not so perfect. You could use a smaller brush and you could create some little drips like this. So it looks like the paint was built up very, very thick here in these concentrated darkest areas. And there you go, you have a very basic stencil. Now there are a few other things that we can do to help this look a lot more realistic. We can transform it into perspective so it matches these perspective vanishing points. And we can help blend it with the background. We can even erode the paint a little bit so it looks like it's been on the wall for a while. Let's go ahead and do that with a different example. I'm gonna go ahead and just name this layer star and we'll hide it so that we have it as an example. And this time I'm going to use a layered stencil with multiple layers of color. I'm gonna to go to File, Open, and I'm gonna open this file called Brush Vector. This is a PSD file, and this is an illustration that I created of a paintbrush. You can see here in the Layers palette, we have layers for black, red, blue, and green. So you can imagine that these are all of my stencil layers stacked on top of each other. Let's go ahead and select the black layer. Let's go to Select All, or we could hit Control A on our keyboard and then we can go to Edit, Copy, or we can hit Control C. Now I'm going to hit Control Tab, and that'll switch me back to my canvas here. Then I'll just hit Control V to paste. Now this stencil is much larger than the image, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and just leave it right where it's at for now. We'll hit Control Tab again, go to the red layer. We'll hit Control C to copy, Control Tab to go back to our document, Control V to paste. Now you won't see anything happen because that piece that we pasted is off of the canvas, but as long as we're pasting in place, it'll be in the right place. And we'll just repeat that process. Control tab, copy, control tab, paste, control tab, go to the green layer, copy, control tab, paste. So now we have four layers that we pasted in. We can hold shift and select them all. 
We can group them with Control G, and we'll call this group Brush Stencil. Now I'm going to free transform it by going to Edit Free Transform. If your image is really big like this, you may have to just drag it over so you can see one of the corner points. Drag it from the corner point and hold Shift so that you're not squishing or squashing it. Don't let go of Shift, but take it and drag it up a little bit more so you can get more of it on the screen. And then just scale it down a bit more. Now you want to have a pretty good idea of just about how big you're going to want this to be in your composition, but go ahead and just leave it just a little bit bigger than that. Just make sure it fits on the screen. Let's go ahead and click on the check to commit. And now we have all of those stencil layers together here. Let's go ahead and open up that group. Let's name those layers. We have black, red, blue, green. Now if we close that brush stencil group, I'm going to move it up just a bit more too, and we reduce the opacity of it to where we can just barely see it, then we can begin using this as a stencil. So we'll open the group back up. What we want to do is we want to right click on that black layer and choose Select Layer Content. That puts a selection around the pixels on that layer, effectively creating a stencil. And we can hide those selection edges by going to Select, Hide Marquee, or you could hit Control Shift H. That keeps the selection active while hiding the dashed lines. Now the next step is very important. We want to click on the brush stencil group and create a new layer so that that new layer goes above that brush stencil group. We'll go ahead and call this layer Brush Paint, and this is going to be the destination for our paint. I have black selected already. I'm going to go ahead and select Smooth Spray. I'm going to switch back to my brush tool, make my brush a bit bigger, and I'll just spray over this stencil to fill it in. Now this isn't exactly where it's going to go on the wall. We're going to fill it in first, and then we're going to position it on the wall where we want it. So let's go with something like that. Now it's up to you if you want to separate your paint onto separate layers, just like you have separate layers for your stencils. I'm going to combine it onto the same layer. So I'm going to go ahead and just right click on the red stencil layer, choose Select Layer Content. You can see that puts my stencil there. Go back to Brush Paint. Very important that we go back to the layer where we want to put the paint. I'm going to select Red, and I'll just airbrush in some of that. We'll right click on the blue stencil layer, Select Layer Content, select Blue for the color, go back to the Brush Paint layer to paint on, fill in that with some paint, right click on Green, Select the green stencil content, back to the brush paint, select a green color, and paint in the green. Now we can deselect that active selection with Control D. We can go ahead and hide our brush stencil layers, and we're left with that brush paint on its own layer. Now what we can do to help blend it with the background and help it look more like spray paint is to change the composite method to multiply. You may also want to reduce the opacity just a bit. Sometimes that helps to blend it in with the background a bit more so that the colors aren't too rich. And if you want, you could go back to black. And if you wanted to create some little drips and things like that, you could do that. You could even use a bigger brush just to overspray it a tiny bit in a few places. And now we have a pretty good looking stencil. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to match it to the perspective in our image. I'll go ahead and create a new layer here just to demonstrate. And what I mean by perspective is if we look at the horizontal lines that are visible in our background image, they start to converge. And by that, I mean the lines get closer together until they will eventually, somewhere off screen here, converge at a point, which is known as the vanishing point. So you can see the distance between the lines is wider here than it is over here. So we know that there's a vanishing point over there. Now if we could see more of this building, we might see that there's a corner of the wall way off to the side, and then there'd be another vanishing point that would start to converge over on the other side. That would be a two-point perspective. In this case, we're only seeing one vanishing point, but by definition, this is a two-point perspective. If you were very low to the ground and you were looking up at a very tall building, then you would have a third vanishing point up here at the top. Likewise, if you were very high up on a building and you were looking down, then the third vanishing point would be down there at the bottom. If the vanishing point is in the center and everything is kind of emanating out from that point, then that would be a one point vanishing point. So I know that sounds complicated, but let's go ahead and just pull up the perspective drawing guides because it's a lot easier than you think. So in the toolbar here, we have perspective guides. Next, you may need to click the on off button here in the properties bar to turn the perspective guides on and make them visible. Next, we wanna choose the preset of two point general. And then we can make the guides easier to see by increasing these settings here. We'll do this one and then the horizon as well. 
these other guides we can just leave kind of faint. And if you prefer a different color, then you can choose a different color. I'm going to go ahead and choose black so they show up better. So what we have here is two vanishing points that do not match our composition. So we'll need to go ahead and line those up. Let's select our zoom tool and let's drag to zoom out a bit so we can see more of our canvas and our background. Let's click back on the perspective guide tools and now you'll be able to see the two vanishing points. Now in order to match these up, we just need to match up this vanishing point with the one vanishing point over here. If you had two vanishing points, you'd have to determine the other vanishing point and line that one up as well. So you can see coming out of each of these vanishing points are two lines. These are your main guidelines. And each of these guides have three dots. The center dot, the biggest one, allows you to reposition the guide. And the two surrounding it control the angle. You rotate it on this center point as the axis. So all you have to do is line this center guide up with one of the horizontal lines in your image, and then rotate one of the angle dots until it matches perfectly. And if you drag and pull away toward your vanishing point, sometimes that makes it easier to line up. But now see how this guide more or less perfectly lines up? That's gone ahead and adjusted our vanishing point. And we need to get the other top line and drag that one down. And we have a horizontal guide on the window that we can use. And just try to match that one up as best you can as well. That'll straighten out your horizon line. If you wanted to double check and make sure it's absolutely perfect, you can drag this guide down. Go ahead and line that one up. And then just check all of your guides by dragging this line around. This one's still a little bit off, but it's not really a big deal if it's off by just a little bit. That line there looks fine, so we're looking good. Now let's go ahead and just position these guides, because we're going to be using these guides to help determine the perspective for the stencil that we're going to put on the wall. So this guide represents the top edge of the stencil. This one represents the bottom. So we'll say we want it to be between these two guides. Now we can go ahead and zoom back in. We we'll want to click back on our perspective guides tool and just make sure that this perspective guided strokes is not turned on because what that'll do is that'll lock all of our brush strokes into perspective and we don't want to do that here. Next, let's select the rectangular shape tool. And up here in the properties, we want to make sure that it has no fill and that it has a stroke. And the stroke can be any color you want. It doesn't really matter. We want to draw a box around our stencil here. And then we want to make sure that we eliminate all the negative space. So to do that, we'll go to the Move tool, and we'll just drag from these little squares here just to bring it in. So we go right to the edge. Now if we go ahead and hold Shift so that we're selecting both the rectangle and the brush paint layer, and we free transform it by going to Edit Free Transform, we can go ahead and click on OK. Then the first thing I want to do is I want to drag this up. Think about more or less where I want it positioned, but I want the top corner of the box to touch the top guide and I want the bottom corner to do it as well. So I'm going to hold shift as I drag this corner. So this line intersects with that corner. This line intersects with that corner. Then what we want to do is we want to click on the distort mode. And then we want to drag the corner points on the opposite side while keeping them vertical so that this line matches this line and we want this line to match this line. So this one goes straight down. Keep that line vertical. So now the perspective of our paint matches the perspective of our painting. There's just one problem. When you take a flat image and you turn it like this, it should get a little bit squished, which is called foreshortening. For example, I have this virtual plane that says foreshortening. And if I take it and I start to rotate it, you can see that it's a lot less wide as I start to turn it until once it's completely sideways, it basically disappears. So as you start to turn away from the viewer, you need to squish a little bit. So that means that these lines need to come in a bit depending on how far that plane is turned away from you. Now you can just eyeball it. You don't have to worry about it being perfect, but you do know that you need to at least bring it in a little bit so it matches the angle of that wall. Something like that looks good to me. So I'll click on the check to commit that. Then I can go ahead and just click on the rectangle layer, hide the rectangle layer. I can go to my perspective guides in the toolbar and turn those off. And now my stencil is in perspective on my wall. Now at this point, you really don't need that rectangle layer anymore. You can just delete that. And if you want to, you can now add a mask to this brush paint layer. Select black. And then I'm going to choose a brush that is called Square Hard Pastel. This is found in the Chalk Pastel and Crayons category. And then you'll want to choose a paper texture that matches the texture of your wall or the surface that you painted on. I'm going to choose Simulated Wood Grain. And I'm going to use these settings here, 123 for the scale. And then if I paint, you'll see what I'm going to do is erode away some of the paint. 
what this is doing is when I'm painting in this mask with black, it's concealing those areas. I can make my brush really small. I can really chip away at it like so, and then it looks like it's been on the wall for a lot longer. Now if I overdid that, I can always switch back to white and I can do the opposite. I can bring it back so it's kind of like temporarily erasing it when you're using this mask. And you can experiment with other papers as well. I could use basic paper, for example. What's important is that you want the contrast to be fairly high on these papers. I want to switch to black. I make sure that the scale is pretty low here. And if I use a pretty big brush, then I can make it look like somebody came through and maybe tried to scrub it off of the wall and it's starting to really fade away. I think something like that looks pretty convincing. So that's how you can paint a stencil. But before we go, I'm going to create one more layer and I'll just show you how you can quickly create handwriting on the wall as well. I'm going to choose an airbrush that's called Wild Airbrush, found in the Airbrushes category. I'm going to select Black, and we can have it say Viva La Digital Art. Let's go ahead and name this layer. We'll call it Handwriting, and again, we can reduce the opacity of that layer to help it blend in. We can add a mask to that layer, select Black, Go back to our square hard pastel or really any brush that uses the grain here. We'll go ahead and reduce the contrast a bit. And we can use that to scrub some of the paint off the wall there. And once you're done with that mask, you can go ahead and right click on it and choose apply layer mask. And I'm going to do that because I also want to transform this into perspective. And there you go. You have some digital graffiti on top of a real world photograph. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, take a quick second to like this video and make sure to subscribe for more Corel Painter videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.